Have you ever wondered, can a plant-based diet improve your thyroid? Well, I'm gonna share my personal story with you. Not only how it got better, but it actually harmed me. Stay tuned. You know, part of my plant-based journey is not just, you know, helping patients get better, reversing, you know, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, or improving their numbers with type 1, reversing high blood pressure, uh, losing significant amounts of weight, sleeping better, changing their lives. I mean, that's all amazing. But one thing that I wasn't expecting is my thyroid to get better. So when I gave birth to my second child, Jonathan, um, a few months later, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism, um, specifically Hashimoto's. And Jonathan was actually born with hypothyroid um, diagnosis because they're, they do these little tests after a child's born or an infant's born, and his thyroid was abnormal. And two weeks later, when they actually tested again, his was okay. So his screening was abnormal. So that says that I actually developed the hypothyroidism while I was pregnant. And poor Jonathan, um, I had three kids and he was the middle one. He went on to develop very severe dyslexia. He, you know, he's fine now, he graduated college and is working, doing all these amazing things, but it was a real struggle. And that would be a actually a great story to share some other time. But the thyroid, what was interesting, when I went to a plant-based diet, um, I had been hypothyroid for 15 years at that time. And I continued to take medication, you know, increasing doses over the years, and didn't really think much about it. Never ever in my mind conceived that this could actually get better with a change in diet. It was an autoimmune disease. I mean, who thinks, who knows what causes autoimmune disease? At least that's what I initially thought. And so we went to a plant-based diet. And um, besides my thyroid getting better, my allergies improved. I used to take, oh my heavens, um, uh, Singular at night. I took Allegra in the morning and used nasal spray every day for well over a decade. Severe uh, allergies to cats. And within 90 days of going to a plant-based diet, I stopped using medications. Um, I ended up having a cat for six years, no significant allergies at all. And, but back to my thyroid. So what happened was, over the course of the first year um, of having my thyroid, you know, usually if your thyroid's pretty stable, you just go in once a year and have it checked. And um, in that first year, it was really weird because I started having some shoulder issues, like kind of stiffness and pain. And, you know, I was very active. We did Spartan races and Tough Mudders and all sorts of stuff, but I was in pretty good shape and I hadn't done anything to injure it. And I was like, well, this is really weird. And it progressed. It got to the point that I couldn't even lift up my arm. Like nobody could even push it up. And the pain subsided, but the stiffness stayed. And then I went to an orthopedic surgeon to have it looked at. And he's like, well, you had adhesive capsulitis. And what does that mean? It's like you have this scarring and stiffness of your shoulder, like a stiff shoulder. Um, not necessarily frozen shoulder, but in that realm. And he goes, you know, there's a couple of things that cause it. Being over 40, okay, I was over 40, I can do nothing about that. Being a diabetic, well, I was never diabetic. And being hyperthyroid. Okay, now I was hypothyroid, took medication to get me to what we call euthyroid or normal lovers, levels. Hyperthyroid occurs when with two things. One, either your body's producing too much thyroid medication or thyroid hormone, or you're taking too much medication. And I was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Does that mean that I'm taking too much medication and I'm hyperthyroid? And what was interesting, they measured my levels and I indeed was very hyperthyroid. And so we had to drastically decrease my dosage. And this went, you know, there are only about 15 to 16% of cases of adhesive capsulitis. Do you get it in both shoulders? Well, you know, lucky me, I should play the lottery. I got both. <laughs> so I actually suffered for two years and had to go through physical therapy. Um, and just, 
I have newfound respect for anyone who suffers from shoulder because you never really um, understand, like for example, how much your little toe means to you until you break it. <laughs> you don't really realize how much you do with your arms until you can't move it or you get this really sharp, intense pain shooting through your shoulder joint. Um, mm. Anyway, that over time, you know, I went from having to do my bra on the front and rolling it around for two years to being able to go back to normal and move everything around. Um, but my dosage continued to drop. I'm still on thyroid medication, the only, thyroid, the only medicine I take, but it does speak to the power of halting, you know, things that are causing the inflammation and, and the, the fire of autoimmune disease. Now, I actually thought I ate well. I didn't drink sodas. I didn't eat a lot of processed foods, you know, but I ate meat and dairy, um, which I'm pretty sure is the dairy <laughs> is a big one, was the inflammatory component for me. And when I removed those things and started flooding my bodies with these amazing, you know, antioxidant, um, really vitamin nutrient dense, you know, plant foods, my body's like, oh, finally she stops assaulting us every day, three times a day when I was eating and literally allowing us to heal. And that's what my body did. Now my thyroid still obviously needs some help, but not as much help as it did. And once you develop one autoimmune disease, you're more likely to develop another one um, than the regular population. So that also had me concerned. My aunt died from multiple sclerosis. Um, you know, I was always worried that what are my children gonna do? You know, are they at an increased risk for certain things? Like my daughter had asthma when she was a child, um, probably related to the dairy that we forced her to drink. She didn't even like milk, but you know, you, you're thinking you're doing the right thing. So, you know, you're, <laughs> you can have healing from a plant-based diet, but you may have to find it through actually getting something like me who had a consequence of getting better, which would be, you know, the shoulder. Let's say someone who switches to a plant-based diet doesn't stop their blood pressure medications in time, or they're not being monitored, if it, you know, very well. They could get low blood pressure. Um, same thing for my diabetics. If there's diabetics who switch to a plant-based diet and they're not being monitored by someone who knows how to de-prescribe medications, they can suffer from low blood sugar and it can be lethal. So, you know, it's powerful. Is it a panacea or meaning that it cure everything? Will it cure everything? No, but it'll put you in the best possible position to do so. And most people say they've never felt so good. And they said, is this what normal feels like? I think they feel cheated because the most, most of their life they didn't feel what? wonderful thing normal actually is. So I hope that was helpful and we'll see you next time.